What a great opportunity to be able to speak in front of TEDx Austin, uh, you know, sharing the stage with kind of magicians and astronauts and everything in between. Uh, you know, truth be told, I've got a little bit more to do with kind of the people running the booth, the people backstage, the people behind the scenes um, than a lot of the other speakers on here. And the reason for that is because I'm involved oftentimes in you know, kind of creating some of that magic, creating some of the, the, the mystery kind of behind the stage rather than being on it itself. But uh, today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about um, kind of a, a newer piece of technology that, uh, that we use, which is called virtual production and kind of what, what, how that's used, what it is, and most importantly, kind of how it's gonna change how we consume media. You know, the way that we use virtual production a lot is to use kind of big screens and a, and a big team to create this illusion of an environment, of a place, of a point in time, and using kind of perspective trickery and mathematics and science and experimentation to create an environment, to create a virtual space for actors and, 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 and props and people to essentially interact with in, in real time. And being able to kind of involve real time content and game engine technology in ways that they kind of haven't had the opportunity to do before. And you know, what that means is that we're able to use a lot of really newer technology, newer tricks that most importantly are available to people for free to be able to test and use. And that is something that's really, really powerful because suddenly the barrier to entry is a little bit lower than it was 10 years ago. And what can be really special there is when we talk about this other concept, which is transmedia. And so what is transmedia? It essentially is something that, a piece of media that crosses over from one medium to the next. And you know, immediately there's, there's some really great examples of that. Um, you know, we've got something like Star Wars, right? Which started off as a film and branched off into books games, TV shows, and essentially crossed over from one medium to the other. Something that is inherently linear. It started with a story, and it went from one part of the story all the way to the end. We're able to use games and books and TV shows to extend that narrative, to extend that universe into uh, more places and be able to give the, the audience the opportunity to explore that concept, right? That you're able to say, I'm gonna start here and be able to really just branch out into all these different un literal universes and, and galaxies and planets and locations and explore more of that, kind of like an onion, unfolding more and more of the story, which each of these different platforms allow you to do in each of these different mediums. And that's really exciting. But at the end of the day, it's still a very linear story where we know what's gonna happen at the beginning, we know what's gonna happen at the end. And it's, at the end of the day, a single universe told from a single point in time from the beginning to the end. And then you have another example like Marvel, that these are a little bit less linear, right? A web of multiverses and characters and intersecting narratives told in different points in time, different universes, different multiverses. And you know, it starts to break a little bit of that linearity. But what you're really, really talking about still is a very linear narrative. We know what happens at the end, we know what happens at the beginning. And then you have Something that becomes a little bit more exciting, which is something like The Last of Us, right? Which is a game that, that, that becomes a TV show and breaks out and becomes a smash hit. And where there's something in between here is something like Arcane, where it's a game that becomes a TV show, but that a lot of the assets are using the game assets, are using the inspiration from the game. And what that is, is something that's really powerful because suddenly you're talking about real-time content interacting in another form of entertainment. Ultimately, game engine assets being used to create TV shows. And what that means is, is that you have the opportunity for this intersection. And what that means is that you can suddenly have real-time content, real-time pipelines produced faster and more efficiently, most importantly, with an opportunity for a faster feedback loop. Suddenly, you're able to say, wow, like this game, I can play this, and that, that suddenly you're able to turn that into the ability to create feedback from the user into the story, and that suddenly the, the, the TV show can be influenced by the game and vice versa. Where in these previous ex examples, we know what, what happens at the beginning, we know what happens at the end, because the story's already been created. What we, we're able to create here is essentially a pipeline of assets that are used to create the game and used to create the show in this single persistent world. Um, so an example here is what a very classic virtual production pipeline can look like with a very linear beginning and end of pre-production, production, editing, and finally making it to a TV or film. What's exciting here is, is that you're creating assets 
and using it to make a TV show, but those same assets can be used to make a game. And so what that means is, is that you can suddenly create a persistent world that becomes bi-directional, non-linear, and allows for some sort of interactivity between the fan and the producers themselves, where the producers can actually be excited and surprised at the result rather than knowing how the story ends. Fans can actually create the story along with the producers of the show, and that as they play the game, the result of, this, of the game can, can influence the story in ways that we couldn't do before. This is an audience-inclusive platform guiding the, the narratives, guiding the story, create, being immersed in it because they're helping make it as they go along. This doesn't exist, right? This can't exist in a, in a Star Wars, this can't exist in a Marvel because these stories have been told already on these other platforms. So what that means is, is, is that the, these stories that we're talking about here have not been told yet. That's really, really exciting because suddenly what happens in the game in season one can influence the TV show in season two because suddenly that shared asset pipeline, the, the, the years it takes to make a game and the years it make, takes to make a TV show can suddenly be condensed into something faster and stronger and more durable and, and, and flexible to the needs of an audience. This real kind of next generation of transmedia doesn't exist yet. And the, 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 the creation of something like this can, can exist and be created by somebody in the room here, they can be created by somebody in their bedroom, they can be created by somebody ultimately younger, who doesn't, who has never had to exist in this single linear narrative. Someone who's experienced as a digital native, who's grown up around media, who's grown up around the internet, who's grown up around games, can suddenly create something that we've never seen before because the technology was never there for it for anyone before us. The future of this is in gonna be in the ability to create these bi-directional, dynamic and interactive stories that are using this kind of shared asset pipeline and that the best and most exciting kind of ways that these technologies and stories intersect uh, have yet to be created and that the, the creators are gonna be younger people, people who have grown up around this and can do something with it that have never been done before. Thank you very much.